All right, everyone, good morning. Our next presenter is my fellow co-chair, Frederick Kautz. Frederick is a steering committee member of Spiffy Inspire, and today we'll join Fred as he pulls back the curtain on the unsettling truth of software security and invites you to reconsider your approach to trust in the cloud. Please welcome Frederick Kautz. Okay, so before we get before we jump into the uh, topic, first I want to thank everyone for uh, for coming over. Like the community, I think has been absolutely fantastic. So like we, that's one of the things that we really tried to focus here was like how do we bring a, a container together that's safe that people can come in and participate. So again, thank thank you everyone for being here and for those who are not able to be here. You know, definitely hope to see you in the future. Uh, you're also part of our community even if you weren't able to make it. So please don't don't feel left out. So. But let's jump into let's jump into an interesting topic. It's one that I find interesting. So when we talk about security, we often have to ask like, what, what is our goal with with security? And very often we have this concept of we're trying to hit confidentiality, uh, like trying to keep some piece of information uh, secret or integrity that's not been modified or availability, which conveniently uh, spells out CIA. Uh, easy to remember, um, but this is like a classic, like like the renaissance of, of art, where people really started to think through these issues. Um, but it's, but the thing about it is that the thing we want to really focus on, like why do we have security, is not security for the sake of it. It's always in the context of something, and I want to really get down to the root of what that something is. And uh, it's really about establishing trust. And so, like in the background of this image, you can see a, a bank there. Like there's trust that's put in the banking system. There's what happens when that trust in the banking system has been eroded. You, we've, we saw some events occur earlier this year that uh, are indicators of, of, of the damage that can occur when that, when that trust is not there. So the same thing happens with, with us with companies or with individuals is what happens when that trust is eroded. And part of the path is that when we want, when we want to perform some task, when we want to perform something, we, we have to establish that trust, like this little cat here that is climbing up and it's testing the branch to make sure the branch is not gonna fall underneath of it because it doesn't fully trust it yet to test it. And then it's like, yeah, I can go up this and then it continues up. Eventually, it runs up a thousand times, and then it knows it can take that particular path, but may not be comfortable with other paths. And so the same thing happens when we are looking at any given system. It's not just security. It's like, why do we have quality assurance? Why do we have uh, all of the testing that we do with it? Is because we want to establish trust that that particular thing is going to do what we think it's going to do. And so let me ask you this particular question. Though. I'll give it a little bit of a pause. Like when we say trust, what do we really mean when we say trust? And like this is a really deep, like you could spend an entire lifetime or a hundred trying to answer this question. Uh, but we need to start somewhere. And we got, I don't know, another 12 minutes to get it right. So, so we'll do our best. Um, and so with trust, one thing that I hear quite often is, well, trust is a property of a system. Like we build a system to, to, to be trusted. Um, but if we think about this, like we get down to what trust is, it, it's, there's, no, there's no single thing that we can say like, okay, this is like, it, it, that it's, it's, it's not really something, like it's, it's a property, it's not a property of a system, you can't build something and say this is the trusted thing, because trust is very, it, it's based on other, on other properties. Those, those properties are based upon our decisions, our observations, they're based upon us looking at the world and making that decision. Like that tree that we saw before, did that tree have trust inherently built into it? Or, is, or was that a decision by the cat to trust that that branch was not going to fall down. And is, it all, is the cat always right that, that it's not gonna break on it as well? So um, this is actually really, put, really well put together by a person named Dorothy E. Denning. And by the way, 
Um, if you ever want to read some really good security, uh, uh, some really good security work, go look at Dorothy E. Denning's work. Like one of the hot things that's coming out, uh, that's been coming out for the past couple of years, are like lattice-based languages and systems like Q. She was doing that in 1975 and was publishing about it, lattice-based models for developing security authentic authentication and authorization. Um, but in 1992 she challenged the U.S. national standard for evaluating trusted systems, which are known as the rainbow books. In, um, and one of the things that they said was, you could build a trusted system if you follow these particular set of tasks, if you do these things, like you run these kind of tests. And she was able to, to change the whole industry with this particular comment about trust not being a property of the system, but rather an assessment by us. Given evidence, we make a decision I also wanted to thank Ava Black because she's the one who pointed me towards this direction. So in short, like this is probably the most important slide that I'm going to show. Here is trust is a decision. You decide on, and when you're going to trust something, what you're going to trust, to what context you're going to trust. And there was a, and I'll have a little bit more on this in a bit, but there was an individual um, named Mike Purcell. Uh, who recently became the, the executive or part-time executive director for the Confidential Computing Consortium, which is a fantastic group that you should go look at if you're interested in, uh, in how to protect workloads. Um, but in short, he wrote a book and where he really covered uh, what, is, what is a trusted uh, system, or like, not trusted system, what, what, is, what does trust really mean? And so when you look at uh, when, you, when you look at what does it mean to trust something, you have something that is where you have the context. What is the, in what context am I trusting this particular thing? So my, like, my relationship with, with a bank, the context is going to be, I'm banking at this particular place, I'm putting my money. It's not the same relationship I have with a doctor or the same relationship I have with a, with a close friend. Um, it's also time sensitive in that I'm going to trust it for a specific period of time. Uh, think of your bill systems when it puts out a scam and that scan, how long do you trust that scan for? Like, if that scan was done in the past day, you're probably gonna, you probably have more trust in it than if the scan was done a year ago or two years ago. So the trust is also time sensitive, but it's also asymmetrical. The relationship I have with my bank is not the same relationship that the bank has with me. So uh, same goes with uh, us as customers. Our relationship we have with software is very different than software has with us or AP, one API, one service to another. Uh, the relationships are, are all asymmetrical. So, so, um, so we, but we want to model all this stuff in, um, but also be aware of what happens when we put too much trust or too little trust into something. So too much trust. 1985 through 1987, there was a system called the Therac 25. Software bug re resulted in a radiation overdose and ended up killing people. So our, our decision to trust this system too much and not test uh, appropriately Led, led to catastrophic results and, and very tragic results. Simultaneously, um, I decided not to post what company it was, but there was a major breach uh, about, a, about a decade ago where a SOC analyst saw the event in their observability platform. They saw the attack going on, but they had so much information overload from the system not producing good results that they decided to ignore the results because they didn't trust that the system was giving them something that, they, that was useful or actionable. Attack continued and was catastrophic for, for the company. So too little trust can also be catastrophic. And so in this scenario, uh, you can see all the events coming in and cat, like cats are flying everywhere. Like how do you catch them all? And so we, have to, we also have to be aware of, of information overload that, that does cause that alert fatigue. It's just as one example. And so the question then becomes, well, now, now we know that there's this concept of trust, that it is a decision that we make. The question is how do we, how do we reason about it? And again, so to repeat, we have to set up a trust framework. That framework is contextual. What is the purpose of this thing? What, is it, what are you trying to defend? If I create a, a snakes game that's multiplayer and stick into a $5 instance in the cloud, it's going to be very different than if I'm trying to protect, let's say, financial information in the bank. So what is the context? Because the context also dictates how much you're willing to spend. What is the value of the thing you're trying to defend? What is the value of, to the attacker 
of that uh, of that thing that you're trying to the, the, of what of what they want to grab from from your from your systems or what they want to bring down. So uh, once you understand the context of that particular thing, again, for what time period, it's time sensitive and asymmetrical. Again, trust in computer systems by cloud. Highly recommend uh, highly recommend reading this. Uh, or at least if you or at least read the first chapter. First chapter is absolutely fantastic. Uh, but what, so what we want to do is we want to start to do this for, um, for our systems and start asking, like, well, let's ask about, like, the basics, like, the thing that you're building on. You have our, all these CI/CD systems. We're talking about building all these amazing attestations and uh, zero trust on top of it. But, like, can I trust the foundation that I'm building this thing on? Like, th think of how many systems are are compromised because of patch management, or somebody clicks an email and all of your security features just go out the door because now you have uh, ransomware in your system, uh, literally, literally from someone clicking an email. And so, so you have to start with the basics, establish trust in the thing that you're building. That's why baselines are also important, is because they help establish that trust in, in, in that thing that you're, that you're building. Uh, and trust in the process, not in the actual individual thing, but trust in the processes themselves. And so once you've developed that framework, uh, think, about, think about from a thread model perspective. Like if I'm developing a thread model for something, the question be, then is, not that, that is not a question of, well, I'm not going to trust anything in there. Well, clearly we're trusting something because we're running and using it. The question becomes, what is it that we are actually trusting? What is the reason that we're trusting that particular thing? Why am I trusting my single sign-on system to, to do what it needs to do? And also ask the question, what happens if it fails? Uh, and you want to build a culture around this of people being of asking this question about our, is our process is our process good is our process enabling our, our enabling us to facilitate uh, that uh, that trust in a healthy way and is it making it explicit and what happens if that trust is violated what are the consequences to the system what are the consequences to the organization to you to your customers um, to to so, so you want to ask what that, what that consequence is, and that gives you the blast radius. And the whole concept of zero trust that is a little bit unspoken is that you want to focus on the blast radius because if something is compromised and you have a huge blast radius, like that's, that's the entire thing we're trying to, to, to push against is, is not having a, uh, a incident cause a, a, massive, a massive breach. But if we have small blast radius, like things are going to happen, things are going to break, people are going to get in, the blast radius of that particular attack or that particular failure is a thing that we want to keep small. So what about zero trust then? Because like, we have this, this concept. And one of the reasons I decided to give this talk about trust is that too many times I see, pe I see people jumping into a uh, architecture and saying, oh, it's zero trust. We don't, we're not going to trust anything. It's like we're clearly trusting something. And I'm trying to get people to think about what trust really means. Like, why are we trusting something? What, what is that particular thing in the framework that, that was mentioned? Um, and the reality with zero trust is we should really actually rename it to zero implicit trust. Like, this is really what we mean. There's clearly something we're trusting the thing, but we want to make it explicit. If you have implicit trust somewhere in your system and you're not, and you're not exposing it, that is an area of risk because that means you're not analyzing it properly. You're not saying, what is the blast radius of this? What is the impact of this thing goes wrong? So when you hear the word zero trust, <laughs> interpret it to this. Interpret it to zero implicit trust. Um, so basically, the implicit is implicit. Uh, I, so, so in, sh so in short, um, uh, I do want to point out that all of these graphics were generated by, uh, by AI, and so thank, thank you, AI, for generating all these amazing cat photos. Uh, and finally, I didn't want to leave out the, uh, the dog people, and there's a really amazing Cloud Native Corgis sticker that was given to me a long time, so this is a nod to the Cloud Native, uh, Corgi, uh, Cloud Native Corgi Foundation, CNCF. Um, but, but in short, um, I, I do want to thank you all. Uh, I do implore you to think about this particular question when you leave and when you're looking at any particular system. Even if you're not in security, you should still be asking this question about trust because trust is not just about keeping, uh, keeping uh, malicious actors out. Trust is also about 
how do you design the system so that it does what you expect it to do? How do I trust it to do what I, what I want it to do? And that applies not only to computer systems, but also to our relationships with each other. So again, thank you very much. So our next presenter is uh, Denise Shannon. And Denise is a uh, Senior Director of Engineering at Rancher by SUSE. And today she will share, share some key learnings and findings and explore how the cloud native open source community, technology, and processes have welcomed us to uh, get closer with Kubernetes Nirvana. So again, please welcome Denise Shannon.